if you get if you get warm, just lift your hands and catch a breeze. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you believe, you'll receive. That's my dad. And why they're up there, get a drink. crazy man <laughs> absolutely we're nuts about Jesus is there anyone who doesn't feel the breeze if you don't feel the breeze come on up here <laughs> Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 Would you read it with me, please? And I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was what? In the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, what? Write in the book and send it to the seven churches which are in a Asia, to Ephesus, to Samaria, um, Smyrna, to Pagamos, to Thyatira, to Sardius, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and who was. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And then, and I have the keys of Hades and of death. Now look at verse 19. He says what? Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. In other words, what God speaks is three-dimensional. That there's always, uh, the whole word of God is three-dimensional. And that's why you must be in spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit to interpret this word. Because he'll be speaking of past, present, or future. And it can be specifically for you. Has everybody got it? So he tells John, he says, listen, write these things down, which are past, present, and future. In verse 20, he said, the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are what? The angels. These angels are known as the angels of revelation. They are revelation angels. They carry revelation or divine instruction. Is everybody okay? And the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw 
are the what? The seven churches. Now, again, he says he was in the spirit to receive revelation or divine instruction. He said, I'm going to I want you to write the things that are past. So God's going to bring him in the realm of past, present and future, isn't he? Is everybody OK? And, and the angels, these stars are known as the angels. Again, they are the revelation angels that reveal the lamb stands are an air, uh, 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 the area where that is where the churches are or the body of Christ is, which is supposed to be the light. And it is provided. How is a, how is a, uh, 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 a lamp maintained in the Old Testament? It's maintained by oil. So the, he's, what he's saying is my light must be backed by the anointing. So everybody got it. And in this, my, my church, which I'm going to build my church by the anointing, by my presence, power, and truth, the eternal presence, power, and truth, which is the anointing, that oil is going to provide to each and every one of his children to be a light to the world, that they may have revelation or divine instruction. Is everybody okay? To lead many out of tribulation and so forth. Now, one of the things that he brought, and if you ever, re if you read, there are seven letters that were written, and I'm not going to go through them all, but I'm just going to label some of these because every time he brings something in the letters that he's sending out to the churches or to the parts of the body of Christ, there is always revelation. These are revelation letters. In other words, there's an area of revealing or exposing and then instruction to either fix it or continue. So everybody got it. That's why the letters of Revelation. In one of the churches, he says, man, you're, you lost your first love. You're loveless. Amen? So what was he doing? He was giving instruction to what? Return to the first love. And another one, he says, listen, you're going through persecution. There's a persecuted church. But he gives them instruction to go through. Then there's a compromising church. And he gives them instruction so that it is exposed. And that they stop compromising and come back into the spirit instead of walking in the world. Then he says there's a corrupt church. And he says, man, I'm going to kick your butt unless you change things around. He warns that corrupt church. That's why every end of the letter says, and he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says, because there's always instruction. There's the faithful church, but he still instructs the perfect church to maintain perfection. Has everybody got it? There's the lukewarm church. There's the dead church. Hallelujah. But in every area, he reveals or he exposes, and then he grants destruction. I mean, uh, uh, destruction. He grants <laughs> instruction. So everybody got it. So in this revealing, there's always an exposure and then a divine instruction. Has everybody got this? And that's what God is bringing to his church, more divine instruction. He's bringing more and more divine instruction so that things can be, or, and more revelation so things can be exposed so that instruction can come to do so we know what to do. Not according to our will, our feelings, or our thoughts, but according to his. Amen? So revelation, is there, now, revelation is an area where things are revealed to instruct. Has everybody got it? A witness, because there's three things I want to first share. It's revelation is to reveal and instruct. When you have a witness, it is a confirmation, something that is confirming the truth. That is called a witness. It is confirming the truth, and usually that's within your spirit. When you say, I have a witness, it should always confirm truth, not feeling. It is a sense. It is not a feeling. It confirms the truth. And then there is an area what we call mystery. So there's revelation, witness, and mystery. Mystery is the unveiling of the hidden truths. Mystery is the unveiling of the hidden truths that have been with God forever. Hello. And then he begins to unveil them. But it, he doesn't unveil them to a person that is prideful. He doesn't unveil them into, to a person that's not walking right with God. Has everybody got it? Because even if you go back in the Old Testament, the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes who knew the word of God, they were protecting the word of God. But here Jesus was a manifested word standing right in front of them, and they had no revelation. 